gentlemen, distinguished, distinguished guests, friends, Mr. Mayor, Aslam Bekum, and welcome to the Sunday's And Ramadan Karim, because I think most of us here are fasting. And I should also say that there are plenty of our Christian friends today, including the Reverend, who is fasting with us today too, so in solidarity. Welcome to the Interfaith Star. The idea was to bring Christians and Muslims together in the heart of Nam Gidili. Now, the idea came about about three years ago when I had a pain and I thought, why haven't we done a Miftar in the church yet? What will we do? What, when is this going to happen? So I got on the phone to Rimini, who was a chair of City Circle, and this has been a programming process. And this year, out of the grace of God, we were able to come together and put off this event, and we hope it's going to be a splendid night. So tonight, as I said, it's the idea is to bring together two communities, people of faith and no faith, all faiths and much, and also to celebrate Ramadan, which is obviously a time of charity, but also to talk about the winter shelter, which is the heart of the church, and something that's been very, very important to me for the last five years, because it is Ramadan. Homelessness is something that we will talk about tonight, also give you further detail about the program. Now to kick off proceedings, because it's not going to be me dealing with you today, um, I'd like to introduce our first guest. I first came across Reverend Lucy Winkler about three years ago at the Green Belt, um, ex uh, the Green Belt Christian Festival, and it runs every year. I went to a lecture having no idea she was going to be there, and heard this phenomenal woman speaking, and I thought, who is she? I want to get to know this lady a bit more. And then I did some research and realised that she does a lot of radio calls, a lot of BBC presenting, and is generally your all round of pundit. And I felt she was something who I could call a female superhero. A woman of faith who I could look up to and be in awe of. So it gives me great pleasure and honour to be able to introduce her to the stage. So I'll give you a bit of background about Lucy. Lucy is the rector of St. James' Church here in Big Dilly. She was the first female priest to be, uh, she was the first female priest at, uh, not any other church, but at St. Paul's Cathedral. So it just goes to show how amazing she is. She is a regular presenter, um, sorry, she's a regular presenter and a uh, contributor to BBC Channel, so that includes Radio 4, BBC World Service, and the New Statesman and the Guardian. So to kick off proceedings, please team welcome to the stage the woman who keeps the glue together in this church, Reverend Lucy Richard. Mr. Mayor, honoured guests, just this week alone, Christian churches have held iftar meals in the ancient town of Salt in Jordan, in Cairo in Egypt, in the hometown of Muhammad Ali in Louisville, Kentucky, in Istanbul in Turkey, in Kerala in India, in Leeds in Yorkshire, and today here at St. James's, right in central London. There was an iftar for the Christian Muslim Forum, hosted by the Archbishop of Canterbury to this week at Lambeth Palace. It's just one way that Christians can show hospitality to Muslims and invite you to break your fast with us, while affirming our common heritage with our Jewish brothers and sisters as children of our pilgrim ancestor, Abraham. Just as we held a joint celebration of harvest and the Jewish festival of Sukkot late in 2014, we celebrate with our Muslim sisters and brothers now. And may I say to all of you here from our sister religions, we are honoured by your presence in our church. You dignify us by your visit. And with you, we pray for courage, for strength and for humility to work for good relations between all the citizens of London. This church building has been here since 1684. Our church has been here for well over 300 years standing on the main road west, Piccadilly, out of London. We've always been, therefore, and will continue to be, a place of refreshment for travellers, a place of welcome, friendship, and community for everyone. Everyone. It's worth saying again, everyone. 
who passes by. You'll see that most of our windows have no stained glass. We believe it's important that we see the world outside our walls and the world sees us and that we pray differently as a result. Our historic wood carvings of lime wood you see in front of you, again over 300 years old themselves, of flowers and birds, of leaves and fruit, remind us that even in the midst of this busy, noisy, often dirty city, we're part of a beautiful world created by God. And in the Portland stone that makes up the walls of this church are fossils from the last ice age, over 10,000 years ago. And so we know that even as we sit here in the 21st century in this building, we're surrounded by stone that has witnessed the journeys of Abraham, the teachings of Jesus, and the life of Muhammad, peace be upon them. You'll see also that we're hosting at the moment an exhibition called The Key, the Egyptian hieroglyph reading life. There are 40 of them around the church, and they've been decorated by artists from east and west. And so it is good to meet together, to eat and drink together, of course. And on estates in London, amongst neighbours, between mosques, synagogues, churches and temples, this happens all over London, that people from different places get to know each other over a meal. But we are all people of the book, and our scriptures are full of stories. So our task is, is today is not simply to have a good time together. It is to tell a different story from the one that is often so public and says that Muslims, Jews and Christians cannot be friends, partners and contributors to peaceful cooperation between faiths. That will make London not just a prosperous city, but a good city. This meal together, therefore, is something of an act of resistance, a powerful statement telling a different story, that friendship and peace exists and flourishes between people of different faiths and goodwill in this city. Every day in this church, we open our doors at eight o'clock in the morning. Nearly always, there are people waiting to come in and find some sanctuary from a life lived outside. Living outside can be exhausting, often frightening and disorientating. And so this historic building, as others in the city, is one place where during the day and over the winter, as you're about to hear from our panel, during the night, men and women who have lost their family can find safety here. We also welcome those who work around here too. The hedge fund managers from German Street, the diplomats from Chatham House and St James's Square, the artists from the Royal Academy, and the retailers from Piccadilly. And tonight, we welcome you, our sisters and brothers from London and beyond, to discuss with us and our panel the theme of tonight's conversation, our common commitment to people who are homeless, and how we can work together to help make this not just a clean city, or a flourishing city, not just a vibrant city or a diverse city, but a good city, underpinned by values of peacemaking, the creation of beauty, and the commitment to justice we can all share. You're very welcome. Salam alaikum. and befriending everybody and 
she and I constantly had our little matters in the corner where we were talking about who plants us and how much we both really, really admire him. So, as the um, associate rector, like you've seen, she takes charge of the church too, and she also takes charge of the pastoral care of the church and the um, congregation. She's also the head of um, head of the Theatre Chaplains UK and is going to be continuing the proceedings for this evening and meeting and sharing tonight. So can you please wish a warm welcome to Reverend Lucy Newton. But I hope too it's also something prophetic that we do together. A microcosm at the end of what has been an extraordinary and terrible week in our world. A microcosm of the world as it should and as it could be. With those from, as we've heard, mostly the three Abrahamic faiths coming together in friendship and in faith and in solidarity, coming together exactly as we are. Not as we think we ought to be, not as we expect one another to be, but actually with all our weaknesses and our shortcomings, with all our hopes, our dreams and our aspirations. <coughs> After so many terrible events in our world this week, and tragically most recently, the murder of MP Joe Cox, it seems only right to begin by marking our gathering this evening with a moment's silence. So could I please ask you all to stand? and to stand in solidarity and defiance against hatred, violence and intolerance. We've been reminded of Brendan Cox in these last few days. Hate doesn't have a creed, race, or religion. It is poisonous. Thank you. Please be seated. <coughs> so it's my pleasure now to introduce our four panelists who will be speaking now each of their own experiences of being part of the project of what began as the Westminster Church's Winter Shelter and now we're delighted those uh, includes both uh, Jewish and Muslim friends as together we provide hope and hospitality. Our first speaker is Debbie O'Brien. Debbie is a member of our community and our congregation here at St James's and has been managing the Winter Shelter here since its fruition five years ago. Please welcome Debbie Westminster, the Westminster. 
Westminster shelters are organised by the West London Day Centre. They see over 100 homeless people every single day and they work with them, they do key work, work with benefits, housing, accommodation. And the need in the winter is for people to be able to move on into accommodation. Because if you're on the streets, you don't have the energy, you're not thinking about getting into your house, you're thinking about staying dry and keeping safe. The vision for the Westminster Churches and Synagogue Winter Shelter started in 2010, six years ago, and it was one woman, Reverend Anne Kerr. She went to West London Day Centre with this vision. And in 2010, there were four venues. They could only open four nights a week, and they ran just for three months. This year, 2015 to 16, there were 14 venues. We ran for eight months and open every single night. So it's really grown, and there's also a what next. We're talking about maybe even being able to open for a year. That's a question mark for next year's planning. The need, as I said, is to help people to move on to housing. How, what a winter shelter looks like. Each venue is completely different. They all have different characteristics. The West London Day Centre refer 15 guests into the winter shelter each night. So they're our umbrella organisation. They keep boundaries. They support what we do. In each shelter, there's a coordinator and a number of volunteers. That might be 10 volunteers, it might be 48. It depends on the venue and who you know. And then within each night, so for instance, the James is on a Tuesday night, we have three shifts um, an evening, so that is just the evening, a kitchen shift, so that's three people providing and cooking a meal, and then an overnight and breakfast shift. So it's a lot of hard work and it's a lot of commitment and especially when we went to eight months this year and the coordinators all meet every month to update and to plan and discuss. But the key word is hospitality. It's about people coming together and sharing a meal and providing a shelter, guests and volunteers. The funding for the shelter, we raise the money ourselves, each venue raises its own money. And once again, we raise money to pay an overall coordinator because there's 14 venues. That's a lot of hard work, that's a lot of people, and it's a lot of keeping people on track. So we have that each year. So what does that look like here at St. James's? Oh, actually, the thing I need to tell you is the impact of the winter shelter. So this year, we had 65 people who came as guests through the winter shelter. And of those, 36 were housed, 10 are in paid employment, and 6 are reconnecting with family and the countries where they come from. And that all happens because people can be held in safety over the winter. It makes a huge difference. At the West London Day Centre, they don't have time winter shelter supports their work. We're not there to give rights and benefits, we're there to make hospitality, to provide a safe place, to be together, to share stories, to share languages. At St James's we have 48 volunteers this year and one of the new things that for us this year was um, City Circle came on board as volunteers. We met just a year ago now and that was amazing and the difference for us was volunteers who came with generosity and energy and Muslim faith, Christian faith and Jewish faith in our shelter. And that was great for guests who come from different faiths and different cultures. Sam I will probably say, but um, we found she was speaking Punjabi and we had a guest who couldn't speak English. There were all sorts of challenges in the shelter. When St James came on board five years ago, we didn't even have a kitchen. We ran a whole first shelter with barely a kitchen. It was one of our biggest challenges, and since then we've put in the kitchen so we can offer fresh cooked food. With City Circle coming on board, we had we were able to extend our chef rota. So I don't know if Jan's here, but she came on board as a chef. So she was able to leave once every four weeks and brought the most fantastic curries, let me tell you. If you're interested in volunteering for winter shelter, come to St James's because the food is great. We had Sabah and Ramiz who came, he should overnight, overnight is a real challenge. 
Um, our guest speaker in the church is fantastic because they can sleep anywhere in this loads of space. And, and we really enjoy doing that together because we want to to sleep over as well. We also have Simon who came, this is the woman who came as one of our volunteers. She ended up coordinating the venue that didn't have a coordinator for the first two months, so she stepped right up and then she came to St James's and was here almost every week having a meeting coordinator shelter here. What we do here um, in the evening should be set up here in St James's, downstairs in the basement. We have games, tea, hobby, soup, that's the people around me. We have art, which is just offered for people to just be there, just to do stuff together, and that's, that's been amazing. Um, so I just, yeah, it's just an amazing privileged experience, and just thank you for listening, and I hope that any of you are interested in the will find out more. Debbie Nath and Anne, who's asked you to offer a very warm welcome to Nick Schlagman, who is coordinator of the West Winter Shelter at the West London Synagogue in partnership with St James's and the West London Day Centre. And we're delighted that he's with us tonight and has brought some guests from the synagogue. Nick.
and gives us a little bit of understanding of how fortunate we happen to be with the current you know, good run of luck uh, that we have. Uh, lastly, I think to say about myself, I just feel that it's a real honour. Uh, I've made genuine friends through running the Winter Night Shelter. Um, I had the pleasure of, of travelling. In fact, another project that we run is we regularly uh, take a team of volunteers to Calais, um, the van of donations to spend a day or a few days volunteering. And one of our wonderful guests from over the winter, as we were talking, a man from Sudan, uh, had come to Calais, not once but twice, um, and, and said, oh, you know, go, I, I want to come back and volunteer, I want to come back and, and help. Um, so we set up myself, a group of Jewish Muslim volunteers, a friend of mine from Sudan, who took us, showed us around the place that he called home only, you know, only a bit over a year ago. Uh, it's been incredibly humbling and educational uh, and inspiring to be part of this project and would welcome all of you to find where the Winter Night Shelter is happening near where you live and, and to go and get involved. Thank you very much. Phenomenal work. They bring people to 
together. And I think it's really important to stress that the people who come through the winter shelter are not just Christians. There are people of all faiths. There are Muslims, there are Sikhs, there are Jews, people who are Jewish, there are Hindus, there are people of faith and no faith too. Over the course of the eight months, now I, I've been a general volunteer, so I didn't get the opportunity to spend a night in the church. I think my mum sitting in the church would have killed me had I spent a night away from home. Um, so you can take that with her later. Um, so I, I was a general volunteer, and the general volunteers come together, we befriend the guests, we speak to them, we have you know, interactive games, and we also have art like that Debbie has touched upon now. And the far end of the church, um, if you had a chance to see, there were a lot of footprints on the floor. Those footprints are from all the guests and all the volunteers, and you may be able to spot my mum's feet. There was a prize for someone who them. So interactive art like this has been able to bring people together and has been able to bring them out of their comfort zone. Our last session was three weeks ago, I remember, three weeks ago. And that day, a couple of us came in and we were very, very emotional. It's really hard not to get attached to the guests that come and spend their time with you. We knew about statistics of the guests that have been housed and we also knew that there would be those guests who wouldn't be housed. And as I was standing in the kitchen clearing away, one of the guests came up to me and said, Saba, tomorrow I'm going to be back on the street. And that is the reality of what is happening. Despite the fact that we've been able to support them for the last eight months, the very next day, a couple were going to be back on the streets of London. It may be sunny, but it's still cold out there, and this is not the place for them. It was so difficult for me to hold back my tears that day and keep myself composed. I knew I was going to go home to my house, to a lovely meal, to my parents. But what do you say to somebody who says that to you? There were no words. But I'll tell you something that I learned from these guests. I came to learn myself. I don't feel like I do enough. I don't feel like I do enough in my faith. So this is a way of me somehow becoming spiritual. But these people are very resilient. They don't want us to feel sorry for them, but they have a sense of resilience and hope that just makes me look at them in awe. I think we can all learn from them. I think there is one thing I would like to suggest. We want to bring partners forward for next year. The City Circle team have been wanting to do this for a long time. Now they already run a homeless project that they've been doing for the last couple of years that runs every Sunday. And they also uh, run two supplementary schools in around London. But joining forces with St. James's Piccadilly has been something which money cannot buy. It's been an experience and it's about building communities together but getting that word out there and simplifying those perceptions all around in a broader sense. We are hoping we have a synagogue on board, and I hope that there are any mosques people ahead tonight that we are able to duplicate this model inside a mosque and bring a mosque in partnership next year. We are going to be setting it up for next year, and we really, really want some Muslims to come forward and join forces. This is a phenomenal project and something that we should all take forward. It is Ramadan, it is a time for charity, and I might be slightly critical when I say this. We all know Muslims are some of the most phenomenal charity givers in this country. We know that. But we tend to block it all in one month, which is known as Ramadan, because we give 2.5% of our charity. But there are 11 months of the year. We want people to be able to come on board and get, in way, get off the stage with you. We want people to come on board and join partners and remember that charity is every day. It begins at home, so please, please come to us. We are collecting today. I should point out that this event is completely free of charge. So there are donation boxes that are going to be, that are going, to be going around. If you feel like donating and the money will go to the winter shelter, please, please do it. And we're all around to talk too, so please do speak to us too. Thank you. You know, just as powerful as legal and political and economic arrangements on our own lives are the stories we tell ourselves, kind of hinterland, our background, our emotions, our hopes for the future, our memories. 
And that's where faith lives. And that's where faiths can come together. Words are easy, but the language is important. You have noticed all of our panelists refer to our guests. To play host and to play guest is a very important aspect of all of our faiths. And that's why we're delighted to have you here tonight. But now it is my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker. Whatever your party politics or background, the fact that London has been the first European city to elect a Muslim mayor is something we can all be really proud of. And so as a Christian priest who's lived and worked in London for over 20 years, I want tonight to celebrate his election, to welcome him to our church, and ask you to welcome him as he addresses our assembly tonight, Sadiq Khan. Good evening. Can I begin with the uh, greeting of uh, peace, shalom, or assalamu alaikum? It's a pleasure to be here tonight in this wonderful, wonderful church, St. James's uh, Church in uh, Piccadilly. And we are here for a historic, historic uh, night. Some of you will be looking around uh, the church uh, during the course of the evening or had a chance to look around before the evening began. This church was famously designed and built by Sir Christopher Wren, the same person who designed St Paul's Cathedral. And this church has been in existence for more than 330 years. But tonight's a historic night, because tonight will be the first night there's an iftar during the month of Ramadan in this amazing church. And we are part of uh, history here tonight. And can I just say, uh, Lucy, I'm also a big fan of this. But you know, I do lots of um, these events. And how wonderful is it to have a female majority panel? And uh, maybe you're right, but it's, uh, it's good to uh, see so many people here tonight. My fantastic officials at uh, City Hall wrote me a speech last week, stood over tonight. Uh, I'm afraid I'm not going to do that speech. I made a new speech um, uh, for tonight. Because the events of the last week uh, have affected all of us, those that didn't know my good friend Joe Cox, and those that did know uh, as well. And Joe really was an amazing person. And she really was. And when people uh, die, no one speaks ill of them. And people say nice things about them. And, and so when somebody who genuinely is amazing, genuinely is amazing, passes away, and you say how amazing they were, the worry I have is people think, when you say that, and we're not. She was amazing. And uh, I remember, I had missed this, but one of her friends reminded me of this two days ago. Shortly after my election, she did a tweet. And the tweet said, Hope has defeated fear. Unity has defeated uh, division. Uh, London has risen. And the theme of the coming week, as her family and friends remember Joe, will be more in common. We have more in common than things that divide us. And I can't think of a better reflection of that than the winter shelter and what we're doing here this evening. Because when you think about the great faith uh, that there are, there is a golden thread that runs through all of them. Treat others like you want it to be treated. And I saw one of these services taking place today in Joe's honour. And one of the uh, vicars said that Joe was a 21st century Good Samaritan. And she was. <clears throat> she really was. But what you do here during the winter shelter epitomizes what Joe stood for. We are our brother and sister's keeper. We should love thy neighbor. We're not going to walk on the other side of the road when somebody is starving and hungry. And you know, somebody who is hungry 
is holy. Somebody who is homeless is homeless. And the basic tenets and commandments of Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Hindu, Sikhism, Buddhism, all the major faiths in the world, and by the way, people who are a member of an organized faith have these values too, are what is celebrated each night when you feed somebody during the winter shelter. But remember the thief say that the prophet peace be upon him. And there's a story about a woman who wasn't very really religious, who saw a cat, a cat who was thirsty, and gave this cat a bowl of water. And the Hadith goes, that woman was guaranteed a place in paradise for quenching the thirst of that thirsty cat. And I say this as somebody who believes in God and believes in the hereafter. The work you do every night during the winter shelter is a source of inspiration for me as the mayor of this city. I promised during my campaign I'd be a mayor for all this, and that's what I intend to do. But that also means the mayor for the poorest in our city. That means the mayor for those who are homeless. That means the mayor for those who need shelter. That means the mayor for Jews, Christians, Muslims, Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, those who are known and organized uh, faith. And this month of Ramadan is about sacrifice. It's about empathy. It's about remembering those less fortunate than you. So even though you may be a mayor on a decent salary, you fast to know what it's like to be hungry. You could be a poor Muslim, and you fast to have empathy with those who are even poorer than you. But some is right. We will break our fast and we will have a fulfilling meal. But those who are living in the streets of our great city won't have that opportunity and that blessing uh, at iftar time. And it's important that not simply there in our thoughts and our prayers, but we take action. We do something bad about it. And the great thing about this church is, is not simply to say community, a community hub. It is a haven, it is a refuge. It is a restaurant, it is a hotel, it is a place where we come together for intellectual nourishment, nourishment of the soul, nourishment of the stomach. And that's a, a tragedy in the fifth richest city in the world. So look, uh, I, 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 one of my friends said this to me the other day and uh, she was right. The most dangerous place to be is between a Muslim open his fast and deliver a speech that means no one else. I'm going to end my comments by saying uh, this. Tonight should remind us actually of the challenges we face going forward over the next few weeks, months and years. We live in the fifth richest city in the world. Last year, 100,000 Londoners needed a food bank. That should be a badge, badge of shame that we all wear. But listening to stories about the winter shelter gives me a source of pride. And it means that I redouble my efforts to make sure we address the homelessness crisis in our city means I'm going to my efforts to make sure that we get to know each other better. One of the missions I've got as mayor is obviously to address the housing crisis and to make sure that a modern and affordable transport system and fulfill young people's potential. But another priority I've got is social integration. Getting to know each other far better so we aren't strangers. So we can break bread together. We can form friendships. We can get to, each other, get to know each other as well. And I want London be a beacon for the rest of the world. So they can see you can be a mayor for all of us, you can be a church, you can help fellow citizens and be a decent human being, a great London. Thank you very much.
She's not going to like to say this, but Debbie. Debbie really is the force behind the Sedation Reload team here. She gets us into our care. She sends emails at like 2 o'clock in the morning. She makes sure we are all coming to our, to our um, next shift. And also to Nick and to the rest of the Sedation Reload team, to Naz and to Tim, who's been wonderful in sharing this story with us. There were some really important coordinators at the West London Day Centre who are not here tonight. And who are here first, Peter is the man behind the West London Day Centre who has been carrying us on and leading the reins for the West London Day Centre. We have our coordinators tonight. We have Saida, Jack and Ross who are phenomenal. They work behind the scenes. They are hands on deck with all the guests that come through here. And they really, really need to be applauded. They are here tonight, so please give them a round of applause. I want to thank the city circle and in particular Ramiz, who for the last God knows how many months has been pulling up and been pecking his head, and in the last three weeks, uh, to two o'clock in the morning, we've been planning this strategically. To the whole city circle team and to all the volunteers who have been volunteering tonight, that is the St. James's people team and city circle, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. 